So we are in the greenhouse today and today we're going to talk about this lovely plant behind me, the one with the beautiful red blooms. This is Mandevilla or Diplodenia and we'll chat about that in a little second. But the reason for making this video is that I've been growing this plant a few years now as a house plant. It's been growing in a greenhouse but as far as temperatures go it might as well be in the house. But the main reason for making this is that I made a video two years ago all about Mandevilla care and that was only after a few months of growing it so now I figure rather than do a big long rambling video I will try to distill what I know or what I think I know about this beautiful climbing vine and try and get it down into a more succinct little chunk of information for you so that's what we're going to talk about today so let's jump in and we are in okay so the mandevilla so this was actually sold to me with the label diplodenia sanderi so first of all diplodenia as a genus was actually retired way back in 1933 but as with lots of plant names in the plant world it stuck and it's never actually disappeared but officially its real name is Mandevilla with synonym Diplodenia in brackets Sanderi and Sanderi is the species. So I don't know whether this is a hybrid or whether this is the species. As often happens with plant names these things get all muddled up. However what I do know is that there are several species of this climbing vine. It comes from areas in South America, tropical areas. It is a tropical climbing vine. It has several names. Brazilian jasmine is one of them. I think rocket trumpet is another one. I might have made that one up, I'm not sure. But what I'm going to do is just go through some of its care needs as I've discovered in my particular greenhouse. Now, before I start, it's worth pointing out that I am in a greenhouse and, you know, take what I tell you with uh, a very large pinch of salt and try and adapt it to your situation. I'm not growing this outside. I'm not growing it in a tropical area. I'm growing it very much in my own space in the north of the UK in a very, very untropical climate. So outside it might be frosty, below zero degrees Celsius. Inside here, I've kept this for most of the winter anywhere, most of its life, above 15 degrees Celsius, okay? Which we'll come to in a second. So as far as naming goes, it should be Mandevilla Sanderi. It's not a Diplodenia, but if you see Diplodenia, you'll know that it means this particular plant. There are loads of hybrids, and some of the hybrids have actually been bred to not vine or not climb. So they are particularly bred for the hanging basket market or the pot market. So if you've got one that doesn't vine, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to ever vine. It might be one of those hybrids that don't vine, but it also might be either too young because the young plants don't vine for a year or two. Of course, that timing depends on how well it's being grown. It could simply be in the wrong place. It's not getting the right uh, requirements in terms of you know all the usual growth factors like temperature and humidity and all that kind of thing or it could just be as we've just alluded to one of the hybrids where that has been bred out of it which is a shame really I think however let's talk about my particular vine it isn't looking its best because we are just coming off the back of winter and it never looks its best at this time of year as I said it's a tropical vine it really wants to be nice and warm and nice and bright for most of the year it is a highlight plant if while we're talking about light so I found that for 90 95% of the year it is smothered in glorious red velvety blooms but when it comes around to like late winter that's when it starts to drop the leaves lots of them turn yellow and fall off and that is a perfectly natural thing to happen when it's in a, a situation like this so whether yours will do that or not I don't know I don't know what your light levels are I found that I can offset that somewhat by adding extra grow light of course here in the middle of winter we have very short days and then as the time goes on those days begin to lengthen and they actually become longer than you would get in the tropics but for now anyway we're kind of in that time where it's getting a good seven or eight hours of natural light but because I'm in a greenhouse because I've got all this bubble wrap on I've got trees shading the light for most of the day I've got heavy cloud cover which we usually have in the UK so that means that it really isn't getting what it needs if it's in the tropics it's going to get much more intense much more bright light and crucially much more consistently so if 
if you do want to add some grow lights to it, I think you'll find that you could quite easily get it to bloom for 100% of the year. Yes, 100% of the year. It's that floriferous. It really does give a spectacular show. So starting down here with its pot, it's rather large pot. I have actually potted this up once. I think we're into its third year now. It might even be its fourth year. But this is the first potting up I did about a year ago, about this time last year, actually. So it grows up through the shelving, it vines along to this side, and then it vines along over back again to this side. You'll notice one or two yellowing leaves, and this is perfectly natural this time of year. However, you can get to a state where you get an awful lot, an alarmingly lot of these yellow leaves, which might be telling you that something isn't happening that should be happening, or that one of the growth factors isn't quite right. Mine is beginning to come back into growth now. You can see the new shoots are coming on all these vines. It's certainly not in dormancy anymore. It's not producing anywhere near as much blooms as it normally does. However, it's not without them. It still does have them, and they are still looking as gorgeous as ever. There's a little cluster up there you can see. Uh, there are one or two up at the top there. It goes right up there into the eaves, and it's beginning to vine like across the roof. But there are still these clusters of yellowing leaves, which I will just snip off. But you do have to take into consideration the fact that the yellowing leaves can mean something is wrong. Last year, I got an alarming number of yellowing leaves. And what I discovered, actually, was that the pot that it was in was completely root bound to the point that it just wasn't letting the water drain through. So let's talk about water. So this climbing vine is from the tropics and it's actually evolved a thick starchy root. We might as well point at the roots, hadn't we, while we're talking about that. So these thick starchy roots, anything usually with thick starchy roots, means that it is drought tolerant and this is drought tolerant. So that gives you some idea about the watering and about the media and about how frequent to water it. Now obviously I'm talking about what you should do if you've got exactly the same conditions as mine which you know is highly unlikely that you have so I can tell you my thought processes as we look at this pot so what happened last year is that because it had been in the same pot for too long the roots were kind of filling the pot and it just wasn't drying out so I got myself one of those handy little moisture meters and I was able to test it so when I potted it up rather than remove all the media that was in the roots because you couldn't really do that properly without causing a lot of damage um, i potted it up so that there was about that much space around the side and the extra media that i added was of a very well draining consistency so i added some uh, grit to it some sharp sand some perlite and i tried to make that media so that it would drain a little bit more easily and that solved my leaf problem that was all it needed Another factor is that if you do leave one of these plants, which don't forget, they grow very, very large. They can grow six meters or more. That means that they're going to have a big base in order to support that. So if you've got them in a very small pot, very soon or very quickly, they can kind of use up all that space and they become starved of oxygen. So that extra media around the side can really help with that. It turned it around. Within a few weeks, it was completely different just because I potted it up. So that's something to think about. So as far as watering goes, I've just watered it now, but you must let it dry out. It doesn't want to be in a position where it's either sitting in water that's why I've got it raised up and it doesn't want to be wet or moist for any you know length of time if you can see it's not drying out then leave it don't water it you want it to get to that point where it's been dry for a few days before you water it again remember thick starchy roots it's got the storage there uh, the moisture storage there and it wants to dry out it is a drought tolerant plant okay so let's talk temperatures so i've kept this for the most part at 15 degrees on above that's really what it wants to be kept at tropical plant remember it doesn't want to go down really low i have had it down at 12 degrees and in fact one of the reasons it's a little bit slow coming back into growth this year is that i've just suddenly dropped my temperature in this side of the greenhouse from 18 down to 12. so it's having to cope with that a little bit i'm hoping it doesn't suffer too much from that i did have some cuttings over in the other side of the greenhouse it was cooler at that particular time and i lost one out of three cuttings 
conditions through a winter and that was at 12 degrees okay so the bigger the plant the more able it is to withstand those lower temperatures okay having said that there are some hybrids that i believe are okay down to like one or two degrees it won't take frost none of them will take frost but one or two degrees celsius so again it's one of those situations where it depends which one you have i don't know which one i have which is why i took cuttings and i've taken many cuttings i've given some of them away i give one of them to my good friend ed over at ed's orchids and well he actually got two huge plants in one pot i'm hoping his is doing okay i'll have to ask him when i see him this saturday so as far as temperature goes if you don't know what yours is whether it's one of these hybrids that will go down to those lower temperatures then try and keep it at least at 12 degrees celsius and if you can keep it above that all the better so talking about propagation we won't go into the details of that but now that i have got a short five minute video which shows you exactly how to do it in five easy steps and right at the end End, I will put a card up for you to click on if you're interested in propagating one because of course some people treat them as bedding plants and throw them out every year if you want to do that that's perfectly good but I don't think you're going to get this kind of a plant that is so big and such a statement and don't forget mine at the moment isn't looking that good I don't think compared to what it normally looks like then if you want to do that then you're going to have to keep it for much longer and this is the thing with bedding plants isn't it they're all tropical plants we call them bedding plants because they won't take frost but they are tropical plants so they will grow as house plants they will grow indoors they will grow in conservatories you've just got to get a few little things right and you could have a fantastic display so one more thing on the watering of course if it's not growing at all and if it's getting yellow leaves don't think it needs more water you need to reduce it at that point that is not the time to start plying it with more and more water and make sure it doesn't stand in moss i think i've already mentioned that so in terms of positioning you need it to be if it's outside full sun will be perfectly okay for it but if it's inside behind glass you don't want it to be in full sun you want it to be as bright as possible but you want that to be filtered because these leaves will burn behind glass i've seen it happen on mine as far as humidity goes it prefers higher humidity so if you're in a really dry place like i believe some places in Canada are quite dry and I'm talking about below 30% then you might have a problem if your humidity is constantly above 70% like it is in the UK then you won't have a problem with humidity you can spray it if you like but I don't find that spraying plants really helps all that much with humidity probably better to try and create a more humid environment if you think that's your problem very often the humidity and again it depends where you live but very often the humidity isn't as big an issue as people think it is it's usually one of the other growth factors humidity tends only to be a problem if it's consistently high or consistently low you know if we're talking above 90 percent humidity or below 30 percent humidity for a, an extended period of time that's when you can have problems with some plants so as far as media goes i would put it in a multi-purpose compost again you want it to be as free draining as possible depending on the environment that you are in but for me i find that in my particular environment staying moist is the issue i need it to be as well drained as possible so i put some additional into that compost to make sure that it is well drained however I don't want it so well drained that it's just dry all the time and this is one of those things that you're going to have to experiment with depending on what the plant does unfortunately with a lot of plants they turn the leaves yellow no matter what the problem so it could be a pest it could be watering it could be media it could be fertilizer it could be anything and what do they do they turn their leaves yellow so it's a bit of an experiment what's that saying there are no mistakes in gardening just experiments so i have added some grit some sand some perlite whatever it is to really open that compost up a little bit uh, then have a go at that and see if that solves the problem just so long as it's dry between each waterings that should be okay easily propagates from cuttings you don't even need to use any hormone rooting powder i've not tried it in water i've put it straight into like a seed or multi-purpose compost and i've so far had 100 percent success rate i've even actually grown mandevilla laxa which is another of the species from seed quite successfully and I will have a video coming out on that pretty soon. If you are going to prune it or you need to prune it, you can prune it at any time of the year, but I would suggest that you wait till it begins
begins its active growth and then you can prune it back by about a third. But to be honest, I would prune it whenever I needed to. It's just one of those things that if it's in the way, then cut it off. It doesn't really mind that much. The whole idea behind rules for pruning these things is that you don't want to knock it back too much so that you don't end up either missing out on the blooms for that year or you go and prune it when it's just about to go into like a bit of a dormancy period and it knocks it back so much that it kills it. That's what we want to try and avoid. But again, that depends very much on where you live as ever. So last thing to mention about pruning, it does have a toxic sap. It has some white sap that comes out I've not been troubled with it, it's touched my skin, no problem, but for some people that might be a problem, so wear some gloves if you're going to do that. You could probably see from the pot here that there are these little pellets in here. These are fertilizer pellets, I just give it the fertilizer pellets once a year, maybe twice a year, and that seems to be enough to keep it going. It doesn't really have a specific need for specific types of fertilizer, it's just a general purpose fertilizer, and I give it it when it's about to come into its full growth and then maybe towards the end of the season just to keep it going a little bit longer and I know that it's probably used everything that's in its pot. It reportedly does have pests like any other house plant so we're talking things like spider mite, mealybug etc, scale. So far despite the fact that I've had it for three years in here and there's been other pests in here I've not had any pests so far. But for the most part I've found that it's a pretty easy going climbing vine. Okay so the the thing is, if you want to grow one of these things, you become very, very attached to it, especially when people start passing loads and loads of compliments about your Mandevilla vine, then you want to ensure that you've got some insurance so that if you do lose it for any reason, you've got some more to fall back on. So you'll want to know how to propagate it. And I have a video that shows you in five easy steps how to propagate the Mandevilla vine. And of course, I will have, coming out very soon, a video on growing Mandevilla vine from seed. So I'll put a card up just about the Click on that now and you will be able to find out how to propagate yours. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Write in the comments anything that you think comes to mind or if you try growing this plant in the house, what kind of experience did you have? Did you get success? Did you get failures? Let me know. I'd love to hear from people. And for now, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.